Hi, Gratitude Seeker. Welcome to a new episode of the Gratitude Podcast. Today with me, I have an NLP master. But he's not just an NLP master. He is a great guy. And uh, I'm really happy that we've met. And uh, he has 20 years experience in, in the NLP area. He's also a trainer in NLP. And um, I think that we can find very interesting things um, to help us on, on our gratitude journey together. And um, I just think that, that you, you will learn a lot from him, as will I. His name is Sean Healy, and uh, he is talking with us from Australia. Hi, Sean. Welcome to the Gratitude Podcast. Hi, hi, George, and uh, lovely to be here. And hello to the gratitude seekers. I, I really love that uh, that title for your community. I think that's fantastic, and um, really happy to to be here and excited to see where this uh, where this journey, this interview takes us. Definitely, definitely. What I uh, forgot to mention is that you you also trained and presented at multinational corporations in the uh, educational sector even in the uh, def defense department and fitness industry. And um, it's quite interesting, the, the many areas that NLP can, uh, can help lives and can, uh, can make us, like I know that I, I studied uh, a bit of NLP um, a few years ago. Um, and I know that Bandler says something like uh, NLP being, um, I, I don't know exactly how he how he calls it, but a way uh, in which we can know how the brain works and uh, and use it, a handbook for the brain or something like this. And uh, it's something that, for instance, when you buy something, you have you have a, a little booklet and tells you how it works. We weren't given that, and he said that uh, uh, this is what NLP is. Uh, maybe you can say a few words about that. Also. Sure. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, uh, again. It depends on who you speak to as far as definitions. But um, in in effect, it's it's the study of what highly successful people do, often at a level that's not even in their own conscious awareness. You know, they've they've been doing the skill for so long that large parts and probably the core parts of the skill sets. Um, are, are no longer consciously available. They're on autopilot. And, and so what we're looking at is how do we kind of deconstruct the expertise of a master in a certain field and be able to code that so that we can teach it to others. They can take those components on and then we can test those skill sets because we, we want to be able to kind of get a benchmark to say, well, this is the person prior to modeling an expert. You know, maybe the person makes... Uh, 70 their, their sales sit at 70 percent and they and the best in the business you know is at 80 or 85 what's that what's the difference that that makes up that 15 percent and and how do we extract that from the expert because sometimes even if the expert's very helpful and wants to share even they don't quite know how it is that they read other people so well and adjust in in the moment um so nlp in effect is about finding that x factor um coding it and then passing it on to others um, so it, it's a fascinating, uh, fascinating field. And, um, the further I go, I, I remember when I did my first block of NLP practitioner, which is kind of the base level certification and, uh, my, my practitioner program back in 1998, I think it was, or something like that. And, um, it was 24 days in, in sort of four day blocks. And I remember walking out of the first four day block thinking, what's the rest for? Um, <laughs> how much more can there be to learn about people? Uh, and, and 20 years later, I'm like, wow, how much more is there to learn about people? <laughs> um, you know, I, I've got probably more questions now than I ever have, but I really delight in, in um, the ability to be able to support and assist people in different areas, be that their personal life or their business. Um, so it's really been uh, a, um, I guess wonderfully gifting for me um, and, and it's, it's been a huge element of my life journey um, and, and where I'm seeking to go as an individual, let alone my um, desire to help others. Awesome. I love it. 
Um, and the the beautiful part about this is that this is what we are doing here actually in the interviews. Like uh, I have people that are practicing gratitude like you um, and I'm asking questions in order to find out what do they do to to be so grateful to what do they do when it's harder to be grateful and uh, we are actually modeling them at least I am and I hope that uh, uh, my listeners are doing this as well to, to learn how they do it and how they achieve great results by practicing gratitude in a, in a particular way and I, I think this is this is quite interesting that uh, um, this happened that like uh, the explanation that you gave because I know that NLP has many explanations many ways of uh, being defined um, but I think that uh, this one is, is one of the best, of course. Oh, thank you. So, um, yes, the, the core component of, of NLP at its origin was about the modeling of skill. Um, and then the patterns and techniques that have come out of that, those are the techniques that have derived from NLP. Um, they aren't actually NLP. And, and sometimes mm -hmm. people get confused between the two, whereas at the core, it's about modeling expertise in the area of modeling the best therapists, modeling the best business people, modeling the best leaders. Um, and then, ha and, and I guess the real value of that is it cuts down on time because, you know, it takes an expert years to develop their kind of habits and their heuristics and their strategies and hone them to the level of expertise that they do with NLP. We can shorten that time. Um, and, and to me, that's what's so fundamentally valuable about it because and, and why, you know, I value gratitude too so much because the one, the one resource that's not renewable is time. And so it's just so important how we, how we spend that. And, and, and hence my um, delight to come on, on uh, your program, because I think gratitude is a great way to spend time. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I totally agree, of course. But um, what does gratitude mean for you? Um, gr gratitude for me, uh, this may be a, a bit metaphoric, um, but, but to me, gratitude encompasses an acceptance and, and a sense of, of um, embracing the present. You know, we're not going into judgment. We're not going into lack. We're not trying to make things more than they are or less than they are. We're simply embracing the present and it's a kind of a, an active, not, not a passive surrender. It's an active embracing. It's an active surrender. So my analogy for gratitude is kind of like if you think about a, a calm, still ocean and you're lying on your back and you're floating effortlessly and you can feel the sun coming down on your skin. You can smell the salt, um, you know, maybe the sound of seabirds. And it's just that sense of stillness that you have inside what I like about that is that is just as practical when things are going well as to when things are going poorly. Because if you think about, let's, let's change the analogy somewhat and think, well, we're stuck in quicksand and, and uh, sometimes people's natural response or default response to stuck in quicksand is to struggle. And, and all that does is obviously sink us deeper. Whereas the strategy when we're stuck in quicksand actually is to try to float on the top. So when we, come to a space of gratitude and surrender it works equally effectively whether we're in a moment of bliss and joy or whether we're in a temporary moment of pain while we wait to see what the lesson will be as we move through this phase um, but either way it's a it's a great approach <laughs> wow i really love the ana analogy and um it makes a lot of sense and um I've I've also studied a bit um, how how our brain works in relation to to gratitude and um, it makes a lot of sense what what you just said the fact that uh, when we are in the sense of gratitude even if we have challenges um, we get into a different state of mind in a different state of the brain actually that actually helps us to cope with the situation much much better. That, that's that's quite interesting um but i'm very curious to 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 find out on on this topic what do you do uh 
when it's hard to be grateful, like when you are in the quicksand and uh, you want to, to get back to gratitude? Yes, yes. Um, uh, there's, a, there's a number of methods because um, I, I like to have a couple of options because some days one method that would work on a Monday for some reason won't on a Wednesday. So I, I like to have three strategies in my back pocket to, to kind of call on. Um, one of those is, is with my internal dialogue is to say to myself, I really look forward to finding out what I'm going to discover about myself once this lesson has passed. Mm. Um, so if I, if I'm in a problem based state and I can't yet, you know, I'm, I'm in the fog of that, but I, so, and, and but I can, I, you know, feed myself forward into the future, knowing that there will be a time when as a result of this experience, I'll end up with greater self-awareness. So I, I think to myself, I really look forward to finding out what I'm going to find out about myself and others once this experience has passed. Um, so that's one that, that I use. Um, the, the second one, one that I use, um, there's a, um, a, a, an element of NLP called truisms, which is when we are creating a space of undeniability for the brain. So uh, if we're talking, so what I would say, if I'm using some truisms now, um, because you and I are able to see each other and hear each other. So I'm saying, well, while I'm sitting here looking at you and talking to you now, I'm reminded of da, 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 da. But, but those first couple of statements are undeniable for the brain. Um, and for the listeners, while you're where you are, listening to the sounds of our voices as we're talking to you now, um, could you deny that? You could, but it might be a little bit challenging. So we use that same method coupled with a statement about gratitude. So it might be something as simple as, as I'm sitting in this room, I'm reminded of how much I love my family. Mm. As I'm breathing in and out, I'm thinking about how grateful I am for my business. As I'm listening to the sound of my voice saying this out loud, I am so delighted for the quality of friendships that I have around me. Um, so that what we're doing is we're, you know, when, when that negative voice is nagging at us and it's, it's trying to cover us in shame and doubt and anxiousness and saying, you're not good enough. Cause the problem with the inner voice is it has the tickets on us, you, you know, yeah. <laughs> it knows our life history and it knows where our soft underbelly is. And it's very good at bringing that up. And, and so, you know, here's your, you're, you're trying to, 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 to present yourself in the world and, and fight off the fraud or imposter syndrome. And meanwhile, you're in a dialogue doing it's, it's pulling out the absolute gems. Oh yes. But remember that time as a child when everybody laughed at you and daddy, Oh yeah. Okay. So in order to use statements of what is present and undeniable, it pulls us out of those stories of the past that our inner dialogue is, you know, because it's, it's a different time frame because often our inner dialogue is calling off, what it would perceive as misfortunes or shortcomings of the past. So we want to, you know, come into the present time and, and talk about things that we can sensorily see in the room or, you know, I can smell the fragrance of flowers if I'm in the garden and I'm, and I'm thinking about how much um, I, I love riding my bike on the weekends. Um, you know, as I'm sitting here and I'm feeling the pressure um, of this chair on the back of my legs, I'm, I'm thinking about how much I enjoy reading and how grateful I am to have healthy eyes to do that or, or whatever the case may be, because it just helps to redirect our attention. Does that, does that sort of make, make sense? It makes um, a lot of sense. I, I love it. And I really think that it's, it's very powerful because I know, uh, and I know from research as well, because I've done quite a lot of research uh, into the research on gratitude um, that when we when we are in in this state like uh, when we are in the quicksand um, we're we're thinking about our survival and we're thinking about all the times that we messed up all all of the things that went wrong and uh, all of the possible threats that are in our future maybe and um, it's 
really beautiful that it somehow also relates to the spirituality from my point of view the fact that you get back into the present moment and you you uh, become conscious of what is right now actually right what's what's true for us right now the fact that um for our listener that you're you're listening to to our voices this is happening right now this uh, like you said it's a truism and you can't deny that even though you might think that you i don't know you're a loser that something happened a few years ago this is true and yeah i, I love it i love it and it's a tool to to actually get from one state to another and i i love i love this Fantastic. And, and I know I, I, I had mentioned, I, I promised, I said that I have three strategies. So just to, to, to close that space off by covering off the third. Um, th this one's a little bit uh, different, in, in, but I find it very valuable. This one is actually drawing on the past. <laughs> so now I've said, hey, don't go into the past. And now I'm going, and this relies on going into the past. But it comes from, uh, I'm not sure if you're aware or, or um, the, the gratitude seekers are aware, but there's a, a pattern that's used in unproductive disputes uh, called kitchen sinking. And, and that's where, let's say I'm angry with someone about something that happened yesterday, um, they were late. And, and so when I go to bring that up with them, my mind goes back to other examples of times when they were late. So it's kind of like I've got one dirty dish to bring up with you. And that's the fact that yesterday you were late for dinner and in productive disputes, we just deal with the one dirty dish. Um, but if we're, we're going on an unuseful path, what we do is we put that dish in the sink and then we go, and not only were you late yesterday, but last Monday night, I was waiting for you at the basketball for 20 minutes and you didn't show up then there's the second dish in the sink. And then a month ago when you were supposed to come to my mother's and you never showed up and then, and all of a sudden the, the, the sink is full of dirty dishes and we don't know where to start. Um, uh, be, because now we become overwhelmed with these things that maybe we, we thought were resolved, but now all of a sudden they're coming back to, to kind of haunt us or we find out our partner or our business partner is still late carrying these things and it engenders a sense of um, we don't feel psychologically safe. And, and of course, that's going to trigger our adrenaline and cortisol as well. Um, but when it comes to, we can run that uh, idea in reverse when it comes to gratitude with what we call having ready-made a stack of clean dishes, nice, beautiful, gleaming, clean dishes. And, 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 and that's by going back in the past and saying, I remember that time when all the family was together and we were laughing and enjoying a beautiful dinner and we were all really present with each other. And then there was that time when I was at the beach in Hawaii and, and I watched a glorious sunset. And, and so we, we built up a stack of, of dishes that in moments of distress, we, we can call on those. We can call on those ready-made um, elements that help us to go into the state of gratitude by going, hey, what's my normal go-tos that help me to get into the state? I, I can't just remember the experience of being in Hawaii. I remember the laughter of the family. Um, you know, I remember what it was like to feel the cool breeze in the beautiful forest. I remember what it was like to, to, to come across some astounding new idea in a book where I was just like, oh my goodness, I'm so excited. I can't wait to share this. Um, and we've got this lovely ready-made stack of beautiful clean dishes that we can call on. So. Um, because, you know, the problem with stacking the kitchen sink is it works. It just doesn't work in the way that we want. <laughs> but we Definitely. can turn that idea backwards the other way. Um, and, and so we, we, because sometimes what happens when we're stressed, as you well know, is we don't have the creativity to go back and access those experiences. So if they're sitting right beside us, then we can just go, okay, j you know, let's just grab those and, and pull them out and look at them and admire them. Um, and then as a result of that, we'll probably find that our brain starts to, our reticular activating system is engaged and, and we start to come up with new ones as a result or, or, or fresh experiences from the past that validate our value as human beings. But, but we use this, the, the old faithfuls, so to speak, as a, as a safety net to, to get us there more quickly. Yeah, definitely. And uh, what, uh, what has been my experience with, um, with stress and with fear and with feeling down 
is that it's somehow the same kind of stacking. Like uh, this bad thing happens, the other thing happens, and uh, at some point you feel overwhelmed, you feel stressed, you feel fear, you feel so. When you when you have this kind of um, um, backup, uh, yes. it's it's really awesome because actually in reality usually things outside of us aren't that even though they seem unsurmountable even though they seem very bad uh, they're not as bad as we made as we make them and yes. when when we have something like this we can get back into our power and we can make them uh, much better but we can only do that when when we are in in this uh, more positive state because otherwise we actually amplify them we give them more power than than they actually have and also i wanted to to point something uh that you did beautifully um a few minutes ago and i want want to point this to our listeners uh sure. if you if you've listened to um what sean was saying he uh used a lot of um visual references a lot of uh, feeling like the wind on your face and uh, from what I remember from NLP it's important to use as many of the senses that you can to have a more full experience uh, like yeah, uh, the, the the warmth on your skin uh, the the wind uh, the tastes the smells and when you have that it even more powerful but uh, yeah let us let us know how that works a, a little bit because i think it's interesting and it's very useful for us when when we for instance when we write in our gratitude journal or when we do this exercise or when we when we do things that are uh, related to to gratitude as well in general yes i i think you've hit hit on an absolute gem there because the idea about cycling through the different rep systems is um, sometimes, unfortunately, in NLP, we hear people say, I'm a visual person or I'm a kinesthetic or they, they talk as if they're one thing, whereas actually all of those sense channels are running all the time. What changes is our attention. And so it's important to know that actually there is no such thing as a visual person. It, it's just the context will decide how much attention you pay to one medium. And by covering off you know, what something looks like, what it sounds like, what it feels like, what it tastes and smells like, it creates unescapability for the brain. So it's, it's you know, that's sometimes the problem with breaking up with somebody is, you, you know, there's a reference for them in every system and that keeps getting re-triggered. You know, you go past that restaurant that you always, and you see the sign and you go, oh no. And then a song comes on on the radio that, oh no, you know, and, and then you, you, you go home and you, you pick up the feel, they've left a sweater and you, oh, and then there's the smell of them on the sweater. And, and so it's very difficult in regards to move away from that. So you're, I think that's a really valid point that when we're really, accessing fully in all of our representational systems the idea of gratitude and we've got references everywhere it really strengthens and 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 gives it um a lot of power for those moments when things don't go well for us so i, I really like that you've brought up that point i think it's absolutely fantastic and, and very very supportive yeah and we we're not so uh, I think this is one, one thing that's missing when, when it comes to, uh, for instance, gratitude journaling. Um, people tend to write like, I'm grateful for uh, family, friends, and uh, my dog. <laughs> and yes. uh, it's important to, to elicit feelings, to, uh, to, to say, to, to write that you're grateful for um, the fact that, I don't know, your dog... Uh, does something cute or the fact that he comes and he sits on your lap or um i don't know what you feel when you pat him or all kinds of experiences uh like audio visual uh kinesthetic and that actually trigger our feeling not just the word that we just say my dog <laughs> yes. and it and the the, the it relates a lot with with how the the brain works as well like 
if we go into an experience, and this is quite interesting that uh, I, I'm just making the connection. I've, uh, I don't know if you've uh, read Hardwiring Happiness. Uh, uh, no, I can't say I have. It's, it's a book that uh, uh, talks about the neuroplasticity of the brain and the fact yes. that you can actually rewire your brain for happiness. And yes. uh, basically, this, this is, I'm, I'm just connecting it and it's, it's really beautiful that uh, you have to go for, for a positive experience to uh, get into your brain, into your um, neural pathways you need to go deep into it. You need to, to uh, feel everything, to experience everything and to go as deep as possible. And only then it becomes a, a strong connection that will last in time. Otherwise, yes. if it's very superficial, like, like I said, with my dog, um, it's, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't have that trigger, that, that strong uh, connection. And um, NLP helps quite a lot with this yes yes it's sort of you you become associated into the experience as you know if you bring up a memory it's kind of like you're stepping stepping into the picture or the movie and being there rather than when we're kind of in a more thinking disassociated state that's where we'd be looking at ourselves in an image or in a movie watching ourselves patting the dog rather than being in the movie and we can see our hand running along the fur and we can smell our, our, our dog, hopefully he's had a bath, but you know, we love him anyway. <laughs> but so yes, it, it's very much about, you know, how much we can kind of um, put ourselves into the experience, um, which as you, as you rightly say, really does um, add to the strength of um, the experience of the state of gratitude. Um, and it's, it's interesting in the sense that sometimes, you know, like you would talk about with brain function, when I deal with sort of people in high pressure situations, um, sometimes when I'm talking to them about for what purpose would you want to foster the state of gratitude, um, I, I talk about the fact that, you know, if our neocortex, our logical part of our brain is, is, is running and doing its job, then, then wonderful. But if something has triggered us and our neocortex goes offline and our amygdala, our more primitive brain, kicks up and, and we have a spike of adrenaline and cortisol into our, our system, then, you know, if the average human IQ, I think at the moment it goes up uh, almost yearly or, or um, it, it's changing all the time. But I think we're looking at about at the moment, the average human IQ is about 115 to around 120 points. Um, but with some of the research that's out there, once our adrenaline and cortisol get spiked, we can lose as much as 50 IQ points within seven to eight minutes. And, and now at the moment when I need to be my sharpest, I need to be my smartest and, and at my best solution focus, I'm probably at my worst. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so that's where gratitude becomes very practical and very powerful for a business person because the first thing we do is stop and call upon whatever strategy we use to, to access this the state of gratitude, because of course, um, to the best of my understanding, one of the things that the state of gratitude is linked to is with the hormone DHEA, which is one of the hormones that works as a cortisol blocker. So we, we, it's a great, it's not only a very powerful emotion and very useful for a sense of helping us to get a clearer perspective, but it's a very quick way to reset ourselves back to a functional space of, of thinking and, and, and get our IQ points back. <laughs> yeah, I love it. So that, you know, then we can go into problem solving. But, but I normally talk to people about, you know, when you sense that you're becoming stressed um, and your compulsion often then is to push harder um, or rage or whatever you're going to do. Um, and, and actually the most useful thing, even though you might want to kind of resist it, is to stop, access the state of gratitude, you know, through whatever method you do. Um, and even if it is something like, I really look forward to finding out, you know, how much more resourced, educated and self-aware I will be once this experience passes. And I know there's going to be a solution. Um, okay. How do I get grateful? Um, and, and then sometimes what helps is of course, we want that, that change of hormone to move around the system quicker. So I encourage people often to, to do a bit of walking. Uh, you know, get up off the desk and walk backwards and forwards so that we're pumping the blood, we're pumping, you know, and so we're getting the gratitude metaphorically through the body faster um, than kind of, you know, stuck body, stuck mind, 
rather than get the body moving, get the breathing going again, focus on the gratitude, and this will help to reset you, then go back to, you know, putting the world to rights. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this this is incredible. Uh, I I love I love your perspective, and um, I think indeed it works great in in business. But it's I think we're doing the same thing in life in general. Like yes. when we are stressed out, when we have these kinds of situations, uh, <laughs> uh, we 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 kind of get stupid sometimes, <laughs> and uh, and it makes a lot of sense that when when we get uh, um instinctual we we focus so much on how we can survive and so much on mm. on the short term and uh, that we we fail to see the the long the long term picture or the the perspective from from above and yes. uh, that might make us uh, make some uh, not so good decisions and that's why it's it's much better to to have this tool when uh, when we are in that particular state to come back to and to uh, make decisions from from a higher perspective from a better perspective it's still us but um, it's more of us it's the better yes. version of us and that's quite important because it's our life that we will need to deal with the, the decisions that we've made in, in that in those moments so it's better to um, make better decisions absolutely um, but getting back a little bit on on the personal side, uh, sure. when did you um, first experience gratitude? So you might have heard about gratitude, like many people do, as a concept, but actually live it, actually experience for yourself and uh, see its power. Um, I, again, I, I'm I'm certainly someone who's constantly. It, uh, by by nature, I am anxious, flooded with self doubt, and shame, and all the good stuff. So, <laughs> um, gratitude is a constant um, focus for me. It, it's not my default setting. <laughs> I, I'd love to say it was, but it but it's not. Um, and and so it's 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 been an ongoing journey. Um, it's been trying certain ways. And finding that 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 didn't help to give me a, you know, one of the things that I'm working with now is the the with the state of gratitude is the moment I open my eyes in the morning, I, I go for something I'm grateful for, um, and then you know trying to be mindful periodically through the day. I I don't meditate as such, but I I enjoy what I would consider contemplative walking, um, and um, I always make time when I'm doing those walks to because I can get very caught up in my head and with lots of theories and all that kind of stuff, which I absolutely love, of course. Um, but just take the time to notice the world around me and to uh, appreciate it. Um, but I, I guess when we talk about where, where were some of the more significant experiences, that there's, there's one that sort of comes to mind um, uh, when I was on a beach uh, one day and um, I, I was just sort of, I was on, on a slight elevation, on a slight hill, looking, looking down the hill. And, and there was um, two fairly uh, rough looking gentlemen. They, had, they were drinking cans of alcohol and it was about seven o'clock on a Sunday morning. So I made up stories in my head about what those gentlemen might be like, you, you know, um, as we sometimes do when we make up stories about, about people with, with, you know, a very little snippet of information yeah. and they had a very, a very large Alaskan Malamute dog, you know, those really sort of 80, 90 kilo wolf looking things. The dog was off the leash. The gentlemen were, were busy talking and weren't paying too much attention to the dog. And out of the corner of my right eye, I noticed coming over the hill behind me was a mother, two small toddlers and a tiny little white Maltese dog. And I was, I, I instantly had this kind of sense of stiffening in my body, sort of go, oh my goodness, you know, this, this might not be good. And as I looked down to see what the Alaskan Malamute was doing, I noticed that it, it had seen them and instantly changed into a kind of a stalking style position. And I, I kind of had that, oh my goodness, you know, this, this is, um, you know, the, the fear started to rise. And, and so it started to kind of um, move very, um, 
precisely and deliberately towards them. And, and I turned to see what their reaction would be. And I noticed as they swung and they saw the dog, nothing about them changed. They still were joyous, enjoying the morning. They felt no threat. Um, and something about that experience kind of ricocheted off me, that openness and lack of fear that they had kind of rebounded and caught me. And I felt myself going into a space where the only way I can kind of describe it, it was, it, it, I just felt serene peace. I, I, I kind of almost didn't feel solid. And, and then I suddenly had this feeling that something was looking at me. And as I turned, the Alaskan Malamute had locked eyes with me. And it was kind of like we're in this, and, and now it was coming straight for me, not in a threatening manner. It was just kind of like, um, and then, then as we sometimes do, I decided to try to analyze the experience. You know, oh, what's going, and of course the, 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 the experience dropped away. And, and then I had to kind of go, stop thinking about this, just be in it and allow it. Um, and, and the strange thing about the, the response from the Malamute was it, it came all the way up and, and literally just sat beside me. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just able to reach out and, and, and pat it. But I, 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 you know, to me, that was a real, for someone who has a lot of fear, a lot of a catastrophe based thinking, um, I, I'm, I'm certainly more on the pessimistic side than I would like to be. Um, that, that something like that, where I could feel completely safe, completely present in the world, that was a, that was a big moment for me because I, I have come from a background of hypervigilance and, and anxiousness. And, and that's why to me, fostering the state of gratitude is so powerful because we, we have a completely different relationship with the world when we go into that space. We, we can feel safe, not because we're trying to guard against anything, but, but just because we, we're just so open. And like, like I said, we're, we're floating on the surface of the, of the ocean and, and we're in sync with what is rather than trying to make things more or create stories or, you know, find some way to, to, uh, to feel like we're not enough. You, you know, our media does enough of that for us these days. <laughs> we, you know, and, and that's where I think, you know, the state of grat gratitude is so powerful going forward because we're getting all this agended information. And to me, gratitude allows us to come back to our authenticity, to our own presence, and, and we can block all that out and, and just, you know, know that we are enough because that, that's the essence of self-esteem that it's innate, um, that we're connected to our worth and we don't need to do anything. We just need to be. And, and I, I really feel that the state of gratitude is a, is a, is a, a brilliant and an essential component to coming into that wholeness and that beingness and that lovingness of self. So that, that was a really profound experience for me, um, around the state of gratitude and, and its power. I love it. I can definitely relate because uh, um, I know you've listened to, to the first episode and it's the way I start uh, describing the podcast. Like, I'm not a grateful person. I, I tend to be, um, so my natural tendency is to be rather pessimistic. And um, I know people that are optimistic, even though <laughs> from my point of view, um, they shouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, there are situations well, where, yeah <laughs> when they they should really be a bit more realistic about uh, certain situations but i do admire their optimism uh and also i in in my studies i found out that um it's actually so you there's actually a gene for this and it's actually there are certain people that have uh, uh a natural tendency towards uh, optimism and other people that have a natural tendency towards pessimism and uh, the, the beautiful part is that it's our happiness is uh, um, related so 50% of this is uh, influenced by so 50% of the happiness is influenced by our genetics but also we have the other 50% that's um, um something that we can do about it it's something like 10 percent is the circumstances from our life and also uh, 40 percent is what we do constantly um that can make us happy or can leave us in a state of pessimism pessimism and uh, maybe even unhappiness so um i can totally relate and uh, i think it's 
it's really beautiful that uh, you also knew how to get back into the state because at least we as men, we tend to be more uh, analytical, uh, more in our mind, uh, analyzing emotions uh, rather than just living them. And uh, I, I, tend, I, I have the tendency to do that as well. Sometimes when I have a beautiful feeling, instead of just feeling it and letting it be and enjoying it, I tend to go uh, a bit in my mind as well. And I think it's very powerful to, to know that you can get back into, it, into the feeling, into the present moment and enjoy it. Um, but I'm also curious if um, you could go back in time, um, like 10 years ago, 20 years ago, or even more, and um, tell your younger self, like uh, young uh, Sean, what would you tell him? What would you tell him about gratitude? Um, I, I think that the things that I would would probably say is, um, you know, if I go, if I think about where I was 20, 20 years ago, um, it was a very different life. I um, had a lot of anxiety and shame based issues. I um, had lots of problems with alcohol um, and I, because my self-esteem was so low, I used alcohol as a means to navigate social situations, but I'm one of those people that goes from being quite reserved when they're um, sober to the person standing on the top of the table, the, the lunatic at the party, that was me. <laughs> um, and, and enough was never enough. You know, there was always this emptiness inside and, and I couldn't drink it away. I couldn't smoke it away. Um, and, and, and so I, I would go back and, and let him know that, that he is precious. He is valuable. He is loved and he is enough just, just as he is. And, you know, to, take the time to stop fighting the world and, and spend more time seeing what is, uh, you know, there to be cherished and adored. Um, because every, every day is, is just so um, astoundingly precious. Um, I, I had a, I was, I, I was very fortunate, uh, sorry to kind of segue a little bit, but I, I, I think it, 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 it helps with the sorts of things that we're talking about. Um, I had a, a really rare privilege of going back about 10 years ago. I went to a first birthday party um, and people might say, well, what's so special about a first birthday party? The, the thing about this first birthday party was the person was 45 years old um, and, wow. and they had never had a birthday party. Um, and, and due to their culture, certain religious beliefs and some other um, elements of their upbringing, but, but they'd never received a present in their life. They'd never been the center of attention. Um, and, and so there was a group of us that decided to, to throw this person a birthday party. And it was just such uh, an amazing experience. It was so privileged to be there and watch this person have, have an experience uh, that the rest of us took for granted. And, and I, it was, you know, that, that to me sometimes reflects gratitude where we where were able to see an experience that we've seen a hundred times, but suddenly we see it with absolutely fresh new eyes again. Um, and, and the, the fascinating thing as wonderful as that experience was to me, the most interesting thing was, um, what happened afterwards, which was this person was running around trying to find out whose birthday was next because they were so excited to give the experience to somebody else. And we were all like, uh, well, uh, you know, and we almost had to work, work ourselves back up because it was somebody's 46th birthday coming up and we're like, well, it's only for, you know, but, but again, um, that actually was so valuable um, that, that this person actually, I think had the right, res right response, wrong response. I'm not so enamored with that. Maybe the more useful response but, but they were the one that was really in the state of gratitude and looking to share that. And, and, and we'd kind of gone, well, we've been to so many birthdays and that. So it, it was one of those moments where it changed the concept of birthdays for me and, and made me more present with those experiences. Um, especially because we can be very dismissive sometimes of our own birthday 
And if any day we should celebrate most, not, not just our birthday, but if it starts by being more grateful for, for the fact we're alive and, and we're having this amazing experience, this, um, you know, as we are today, then I, I've, I've, I've taken more time since then to be, um, to, to, to allow myself to, to receive. Um, because I think sometimes that, that is a challenge for people too. They're perennial givers and, and they're not comfortable when um, it's their turn to receive. And I really think that that's a powerful thing to kind of foster. And, and you know, it, it links directly to gratitude. When we're able to just receive and we don't go into guilt and we don't go into less, you know, we deserve the state of gratitude. We really do. Um, there's not a single person on the planet who doesn't deserve to, to have that amazing experience. Um, and, and we teach others by embracing our own gratitude. You know, we don't teach others by going always, you know, putting everybody else's needs first or, or you know, and, and slavishly running around after everybody else. It, it, it's okay to be grateful. It's okay to know you deserve, um, and, and to be present. And, you know, those are the kinds of things that I would really, when I'm talking to my younger self, that, that would be the message I'd really like him to have gotten um, because he really felt wrong. Um, he really felt like he didn't fit. Um, he really felt like he didn't understand the world. Um, and that's largely why I do the work I do now, because to me, it's about, uh, in some regards, re-education. It's about learning the, thing, the things that we should have been taught when we were young that we didn't get. Um, so, you know, I like the idea for kids with of the idea of the gratitude jar. Um, you know, where, or, or some kind of ritual around gratitude, maybe a dinner time where everybody gets to talk about a thing for the day they're grateful for, because it starts to install that pattern. It starts to, from a young age, we're fostering, as you say, the neuroplasticity of the child. And, and instead of as adults trying to learn to embrace gratitude more, we're, we're saying, Hey, parents, um, you know, do half the job or more for us. <laughs> so that when we become adults, we're already practiced, we're already skilled in naturally finding that space within our life experience. So I, I think it's, it's a beautiful way to bond with kids, but it really is teaching a very deep and very powerful, powerful skill, the ability for your brain to be geared towards gratitude. Like I said, I'm still learning. <laughs> mm, definitely. Me too. Me too. And um, I think it's very, it's it's amazing that you uh, you got to this point, and um, of course it. I I can just imagine how amazing um, a child's life can be when when uh, uh, he or she knows and sees gratitude uh, from a young age. It's it's just a whole nother experience, and also um, it's not that. So the, the part of the brain that wants us to survive is always there for us and it's good because we are surviving and it's important for us to survive but um yeah. it's not so much so focused on us uh being happy and uh, on us uh actually enjoying life and uh, learning this from a young age can be quite amazing uh yes. but i'm also curious if you have some people in your life that you're that have um had the a great impact for in your life and um that you would like to mention yeah um i obviously um there's my there's my family that that goes with without without saying um i'm uh, i'm i'm adopted um i have not met my biological mother but we we do have email contact um and that was the first beginnings of the journey of my life uh, it certainly has shaped certain elements of me um so i definitely have gratitude for a, a young woman who faced fear and, and and social um shaming um to to have a child um and then i've been so fortunate to have really spent over my 20 odd years time with some astounding teachers from all different frameworks um and, and to them and their contributions to, to me and my learning and, and what I endeavor to pass on to others now, um, you know, some I've been in the same room with and studied under others. I've just read their books or listened to their podcasts. And, and so 
I want to commend the courage of anyone. Um, you, you know, we were talking about this earlier before we started the recording as to how challenging it can be um, to, to put our work out into the world. And, and so, so much admiration, you know, towards uh, people who do that. Um, and I'm so grateful to the people that, you know, didn't sit there and go, oh, do I really have something to offer? Do I really, hey, why me? Should I be the one? And, and, and they were able to, to embrace that and step forward regardless of it. Um, and, and so, you know, um, I am profoundly grateful. Uh, you know, there's a lot of them, so I couldn't kind of go through and mention everybody, but, but I certainly um, am so grateful to the, to the people that have taught me different elements uh, about the human condition. Um, I've had some amazing mentors over the years. I've been very lucky there. Um, and to all the people that have been kind enough um, to allow me to, to be of service to them, um, you know, I, I am just so touched and, and, and so profoundly grateful uh, for everybody who um, puts even to a small degree their, their trust in me. I, 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 I take that with such a degree of honour um, and, and respect that, that that's, uh, and I feel deeply privileged um, to be able to have that experience, as you can probably tell by how emotional it makes me. Um, yeah. But, to me, that that's the epitome of gratitude. I, I am just absolutely moved um, by the courage of human beings. The, what I have seen is amazing. What people can do, and and I, I am forever in awe and amazement at, uh, at at what we what we can do. So, I want to take this moment to say thank you to all the gratitude seekers out there, and I, I wish them, you know, every joy and every gratitude on their journey. I think it's amazing. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it. And I really appreciate your openness. And I think it's, it's very uh, brave for, for a man to, to be so open and vulnerable and to show his feelings. And, um, and I think this is gratitude seekers. This is, this is real uh, gratitude. When you feel it so profoundly that it, 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 uh, gets tears into your eyes and um, you feel the appreciation that uh, of how blessed you are. And uh, I think this is just amazing. Uh, but now uh, for, for our ending, I, I'd love to, um, for you to share with, with our listeners where they can find you, where they can see your work or get in contact with you. Sure, sure. Um, well, I, I've got my uh, my um, uh, podcast series, uh, Sean Healy um, Tools, um, on iTunes. So people can certainly go to uh, iTunes, download and and subscribe. Um, would be wonderful. And then they can also find me at emergencetraining.com.au. Um, so uh, yeah, delighted to. Uh, to, to have further interactions with people. Like I said, I, I am, you know, I'm so grateful to the people that have helped me on my journey and, and, and uh, I, I delight in both. I'm, I'm a continuous student um, and I, I love that fact that, that my life is sort of geared up in a way that, that I'm allowed to do that. Um, and at the same time, I, I really do love sharing all, all the things that I, uh, that I pick up on the way from amazing people. So not, not to mention opportunities like this, where, where I get to meet amazing people is always good with great vision um, and passion. So as I say, I really commend you on, on your mission too. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it. And it means a lot to me. And uh, I really hope that uh, this will get to people listening to us and will um, shift their perspective on gratitude and it will make it much easier to practice gratitude to live with gratitude thank you so much for being here with us thanks georgian thank you <laughs>